proper. Yes. You lift by you lift with your legs there. I am so good at lifting with my legs. You have no idea. It's almost annoying for other people to watch me lift with your legs. Why? Yeah. Because you squat like real deep. I go real deep. I look up and I lift <laughs> like like I'm. They're like, "What are you doing?" I'm like picking up my shoes. <laughs> no, but yeah, yeah. I you, get... you treat uh, treat light weights like they're heavy, mm -hmm. and you'll be able to train yourself to yeah. lift uh, heavy weights like they're light. Because I see my dad, and I was like, "How are you lifting this stuff at age 70? Because uh -huh. you shouldn't be. Because right. he's doing it all wrong." But my dad's built very well. I'm not. I'm very slight built. I, right. I got to do proper technique and I break it off. You see people like in their 30s get up, like you'll pray with them. Yeah. When they get up, they're like, Ugh. Yeah. And I'm just like, I hear that almost breaks my concentration <laughs> during prayer. What's wrong, bro? I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell me it's a temporary injury that yeah. you sustained by. I want to go do more yoga or something. But yeah. Yoga every, literally every week at least once for the last three months. That's good, man. It's helped a ton. Yeah. My back doesn't hurt anymore. That's great. It's great. Yoga. Yeah. I fell off of the whole, like the whole, there's been a lot of stuff that I fell off of. Yeah. Just the last little while. Um, I got this cold. Okay. Like seven weeks ago. Right. Are you sure you have a cold? Well, I had it. Well, at the time it was a cold. Okay. And then uh, I kind of sort of recovered mm -hmm. and I just felt like I was just perma sick with like, you know, like oh, low end know. type of type of symptoms for just forever. And what happens is just like, just kept, yeah, just kept, uh, I'd rather have one good four days of proper yep. sickness than like just going to cough and your throat is going to be scratchy for two months. Yeah. Yeah. Runny yeah. nose for no reason. It's probably a reason why, I mean, like as a result of like not sleeping properly and whatnot. But anyway, I mean, like I'm still like a little congested as a result. You sound great. But uh, thank you, my friend. <laughs> but I, I, I will say that um, like if you're sick for that long, just yeah. for that stupid cold, plus like working all that stuff, just haven't gone to the gym recently. Yeah. I haven't done yoga in a while. Are you still like taking those uh, gut pills? What are they called? Probiotics? Yeah. Yeah. How's that working out? Uh, great, actually. Yeah. Okay, so the only the only measurable thing that I can tell you right now mm -hmm. on what has changed health wise, you ahead. called me like two days since you started, and I was like, I'm not gonna believe anything you tell me because you're too excited about it right now. <laughs> it's like me and that skateboard. <laughs> I'm riding to work. It's not a good idea. I'm doing it. So I was like, it's been a month at this point, roughly. Yeah. So good. I take about one or two a day. Mm -hmm. um, only true change yeah. is uh, is is uh, my seasonal allergies, like the runny nose. Yeah. The runny nose, it's gone. Hmm. Interesting. So I don't know if it's a co coincidence. Maybe there's less spores out. I have no idea. All I know is that I'm taking it. Yeah. I'm feeling good. And nice. during the, there was a couple of days where I stopped taking it mm -hmm. and the runny nose came back. So I'm good with that. Yeah. I don't care if it's a placebo or not. I just don't have seasonal allergies these days. And I'm loving it. it. Makes, it's fairly superficial. But one of my friends like, I'm getting a cab, but I'm going to be allergic. And I was like, got to try some probiotics. But I know it makes no sense. I'm like, yeah, my friend tried it. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? No, uh, legit research online. Yeah. It's not. You, it's not like you went to like uh, motherhealerearth dot com for me to like. Hey man, Mother Healer Earth is a great resource for helping <laughs> to, find moms. I don't know what to, that's. to find some like confirmation bias that I'm going to take this pill that's going to make me feel better. You know yeah, how sometimes you search for like that type of thing. I wasn't that. But I feel like if it stuff works, even if it makes no sense, if it works for you, then who's to shit on it? Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, not, not it's, not, it's not even that expensive probiotic, so it's good. Yeah, I was surprised. Yeah. I was surprised. I'm going to get some after Ramadan. Or do it during Ramadan. This is the, I, I think yeah, that I this, this would be a time. good time to yeah, do it. I actually have a supplement, like, I got my, like, B12, all these random things, yeah. fish oils that I wouldn't normally take so aggressively. Now I'm like, wake up, make sure you got all these in you. Right. Yeah, I lose a lot of weight during Ramadan. You do? Yeah, I'm 138 as of yesterday, which uh -huh. is unusually low for a walk around weight for me okay and yeah, but uh, today's uh day one of ramadan by the yeah. way ramadan ramadan mubarak to all of our listeners yeah i hope you guys are doing well and focused listening to this podcast brush your teeth often yeah please <laughs> that bad breath if people don't realize it no you don't no people don't like i realize that when i have bad i'm like fairly caught right now uh it's day one so maybe it's all but like normally i'm very big on like whatever i Take a toothbrush and paste to work. Sure. Doing it like on the hour. But some people, I'm just like, oh my God, it smells like somebody died in your mouth. It is a very specific type of smell. Yeah. And it's gross, people. 
Represent, rep- represent yourselves. Brush your yeah. goddamn teeth. I was at Masjid Toronto. The whole khutbah was about like hygiene right. and stuff. It was very, I was like, yes, these people need to know. These cab drivers need to know, brother. <laughs> mm. All right, before we go into Ramadan. Yeah. Uh, we already in Ramadan, but keep going. Okay, no, wanna, fair enough. No. Uh, Trevor Noah. Yes. Wait, so Islamic Relief. We shouldn't say Trevor Noah. Islamic Relief right. had a... 10-year um, anniversary. Yeah. It was just a celebration. It wasn't a fundraiser. It wasn't a gala. It, wasn't, it was just what it was, yeah. which was interesting. It was at Celebration... Nope. Try that again. It was at Convocation Hall. Convocation Hall. Doing a big. Yup. Doing a fancy. Yeah. Yassine See, Desir is getting a shout out by Shadla Kivria. Oh, what's How does that feel? Dude, I yeah? don't... Yeah? Yeah. I was like, nice. Yassine got one. And Omer got I'm like, hey, is she going to call me too? <laughs> That's everybody I know, <laughs> you know, like, what the heck? <laughs> I was so happy. That was, well, you did a lot of work for them, man. And it, I did. you can tell, like, it meant a lot. It, me- it meant a lot for me, too. Shala, Shala was, Shala is a type of person that's like, let's give a chance. Mm-hmm. Always. Shala's a community builder upon herself. Yes, by herself. You know that? Like, yeah. all, the, she'll be there with, like, a hammer and nails building a community <laughs> if nobody's looking. That's what Shala will do. Yeah. Uh, she, like I had no idea that that was her role was so pivotal for Islamic Relief that yeah. she was the everything at the time. Yeah. I really had no idea. We're talking about Shaila Kibria, uh, awesome person. You know what? We'll, we'll eventually get her on tier too. I think we should. Yeah. 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 Got some history. She's got more than enough to talk about. Yep. All but, right, Shaila, if you're listening, we'll hit you up later. Sorry. She actually commented on a couple of our a uh, couple of our podcast posts. Really? Yes. Yeah, so she's been listening. So oh. hopefully she listens to this one. Who knows? Who knows? Yep. But great event. Yeah, it was a great event. Um. It was pretty classy. It does give me flashbacks of last time I was shooting at the Convocation Hall, which was for Mist. Yes. And it was rowdy as frick. We got kicked out. After that, they didn't they wouldn't let the kids back in. Mist is not allowed in there anymore. No, no bueno. Anyway, um, so everyone did some talking. Noman Ali Khan did a good uh, good little bit. That was, he was that actually was, that very was good. good. Right. Um, Dahlia, something or other. Right. But uh, She the, was okay? Uh, I was running on very little sleep that night, that day. I found that like when I would t- be able to tune in, very impactful things she would say. But as a speaker, she wasn't drawing us in. Yeah, somehow. Mm-hmm. I don't want to blame her for it. Yeah, but it's her fault. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I get on stage a lot now. You can tell when it's somebody's fault when they need to change tones to keep people's attention. Right, right, right. And yeah, yeah. she was a little monotone. But bit. then the highlight of the night was uh, was Trevor, Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah. So Trevor Noah didn't do any new, <clears throat> to what I can tell, any new material. But he did take. He did do. Uh, he 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 like pulled all of his Islamic or Arab mm-hmm. or whatever type of uh, 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 material, put that together. And then after he had a good show, yeah. it was a great show. Well, taking a step back, actually, whenever you have a comic on an event like this, you don't know what they're going to bring. You yeah. don't know if they're going to be like, I grew up in Africa. Yeah. And this is how it was like. And through organizations like Islamic Relief, this is what we were able to. And it comes out to... Uh, no, I think they knew. I no, think the organizers man. knew because comics sometimes do no, no, self-righteous no. things. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Go ahead. When when Trevor Noah was coming on stage, yeah, they they took out a stool, yeah. and a mic. You don't. So, so like, yeah. what I'm saying is that Trevor Noah told them what to do, dude. No, I understand that. Yeah. What I mean to say is that that's like I'm pretty sure they had a com- communication of are you going oh, are you going to be a keynote speaker yeah. or are you going to do jokes? Yeah. And he probably said, I'm going to do jokes. He's going to do what everybody came there to see. Yeah. Nobody came there to see... Trevor uh, Noah talk about something. Yeah. 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 Even yeah. though I'm sure he can do a very good job of it. For he sure. probably has some really good stories to tell. Yeah. I love the fact that guy's like, you know what? I'm going to play to my strengths and make these people laugh. Yeah. And uh, everybody loved it. Yeah. That was, he, was, he was a good person to, to, to bring on for sure. He's hot. He Like, I, I was surprised that they didn't get like Hassan Minhaj. All right. They got they got, they got Trevor, Trevor Noah. Noah. They got big, the yeah. dad. Yeah. You know? <laughs> he, the might, he might as well be. <laughs> yeah, they didn't get the eldest son. Yeah. So uh yeah, so his bits were good. I, I noticed that you'd uh, you ducked out. My mom got a flat tire, called me as they put the that mic stand of the stool down. And my mom called me and she's like, I got a flat tire. I was like, cool, I'll be there. So when you when you were walking out, yeah, the first thought in my head was Oh, he's trying to preserve the like the, the purity of his uh, his stand up <laughs> writing, so he's not listening. That's why I thought you walked out. Ah, uh, no, I don't listen to Aziz for that reason. Yeah, because I've been accused of sounding a little like Aziz. Sounding even at a show I did once. I've never seen. I've never. I never made those that connection. But me whatever. neither, because I don't want to make that connection with myself and anybody. And they're right. like, "Oh, you sound a lot like Aziz. I like it." I'm like, "Fuck you!" I'm like so angry. I'm like, yeah. All right, and he just walked away. I was like, I didn't want to talk to that person anymore. I wonder if it's like it's because they they're looking at you. You're like, ooh, uh, brown guy. It's how I sound too. Right. I have. Uh, there are lots of comics that don't watch any comedy. 
Like they don't watch any stand up because they're worried about it soaking in. Right. So there is a, a thing for that. With that said, nah, for me, I had to go see my mom and pick her up. Yeah. Fix a flat tire. And uh, I heard everybody love Trevor Noah. Omer recorded the whole thing for me in a Dropbox. Oh, that's I amazing. I haven't watched it. Yeah, he, he recorded, Perfect. I believe, the whole thing, <laughs> which says a lot about his volume on his, his phone in terms of data and stuff. Right. A lot storage. of storage space. That's good. That's a brother. That's a bro. Yeah. He got you. Well, yeah. Did he know that you walked out or like he was just recording it for his own? For uh, his no, own I, I called him like, hey, I'm going to go pick up mom. Oh, okay. Can you drop fur off? Right. It turns out he didn't drive either and then you drop fur off. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, yeah. But with that said, I'm I'm glad Trevor Noah came out to the thing. The, the event looked amazing. Yeah. Uh, I love that there were like politicians there, but there were like young people there. It was like a good mixed crowd. The the NDP guy who's running for the federal leadership possibly was there. Yeah. It's a Jagmeet thing. Yeah. I hear great things. Yeah. I just saw his uh, his post on Facebook saying uh, Ramadan Mubarak and stuff See? like that. He says it all correctly. That's it's good. very nice. I like it. Right. Yeah. I mean, he, there's a, there's new blood in that NDP uh in the, it's in, good. So, so it's it's attracting more and more people. So Did he shake cool. your hand? No. He does this whole shake where he'll sh- give me your hand. Yeah. So he shakes it like this, or he yeah. goes like this. Yeah. Just like this, yeah. and then he goes like this, and then he like, and he gets a little bit on the on the way out. Oh, okay. And I was like, okay, it's, it's, <laughs> try, try, trying to run for freaking prime minister here, giving me this full handshake. I liked it. <laughs> you you can't change who you are. Yeah, but sometimes just shake your hand. Like just that. shake your hand. But he seems like a young dude. He seems like he's he in his like 30s. He does seem like he's a young dude. You know seems what? Like cool he's guy. probably attention whoring at the moment. We could get him on probably. <laughs> right? He's trying to get some votes. Right now might be the time. Huh. We get Shyla on. Okay. We get Shyla on. Yeah. <laughs> just brainstorming out loud. <laughs> That'll be great. Yeah. I'm like, Shyla, can you put in a good word? Because she seemed really tight Obviously. with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. And I think he can find the time, man. Okay. We got enough listenership. We got to use this thing. All right, I think we should do it. We should do it. All right. All right. I'll cool. talk to Shala. I'm actually like all of Ramadan, I'm very heavily focused on trying to get good people on for after Ramadan. Yeah. Like I want to have like a lineup of eight solid people. Uh-huh. Cuz uh I think it's been a minute since we had some like guests on yeah. that we think, weren't just shooting the shit with. Things yeah, that's true. A little slow down. Um we we've missed one podcast but we probably won't be able to do it. Yeah. Uh is uh our debrief for Guardians of the Galaxy 2 right yeah you think we can do that on what's the next movie we can like do them both back to back maybe have eric on yeah um <laughs> we are actually brainstorming out loud yeah for um i i, I had a, I've, i had a guest in mind for uh for because the next one i think is spider-man mm. homecoming and so that's uh there's another guest i'm planning on for that one as well all right cool. we'll figure cool. it out we'll figure it out man yeah anyway trevor noah it was great also uh one thing that i like about islamic relief events mm-hmm. is that it doesn't feel pompous no not pompous pretentious okay you feel like other events seem pretentious yeah i don't want to name any names but name um them. maybe they should know and they should change adequately no i don't think so no also the thing is, is that me calling it out is not going to be like oh all of a sudden we need to be more humble like that shit's not going to happen depends so, how you do it buddy oh, sorry swore. Try, i'm trying to try think of who's pompous i will put them on blast <laughs> but, project ramadan they can't there's nothing there to be pompous nope. about they're doing a good job though <laughs> there's a bunch of sweaty people yep. putting stuff in boxes and then hooking up and then getting married. Yeah, not hooking up, but you know. Oh, like halal well, hooking up. Halal hooking up. Yeah, there we go. A lot of people have met their wives at Project Ramadan, which is weird. Because like a girl sees a guy lift a lot of boxes, like, oh, yeah, he yeah. The groceries. Well, I mean, it does show that he's able to do uh, heavy lifting work at a deficit. Yeah. At a, at a caloric deficit. Right. Yeah, I'm sure that's attractive to some people. It's attractive to me. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm like, look at that brother go. Chargeal. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, Islamic Relief is always like, uh, it just feels, it feels even. It doesn't feel yeah. like there's a, oh, those are those people. And those are the, the people that run the thing, the executives, yeah, and these yeah, are the... Yeah. It's, just a, it's just a big community yeah. thing, but it also is like, especially that event was really polished, Yeah. right? It was nice. It was, it brought like, I feel like it, it felt like a legit legitimate thing. Yeah, where a like, thousand people were there. Yeah, for sure. Dressed Great. well also. Do you notice how well yeah, yeah, people yeah. were dressed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you dress... I dressed well. But yeah, I know you did. I saw you. Tried. Buddy. No, you, you know, like that yeah, guy. Yeah, it's like, you know. it's like he shaved. But that says a lot about once again going back to like Shyla and everything like that. Right. You're about to say something. You better <laughs> say it. You make those faces at, at me. You're gonna you gotta let it out. Okay. Um. I've been you know doing my own beard and shaving my own head for a couple of years now, right? Yeah. Like everybody should do with their own beard and head. <laughs> Wait. Are we are we talking about something? Okay. So here's I don't want to shit though. on somebody who that you're about to do. Here, here's the thing though. Yeah. Right. Um. 
just a couple of days ago, I was just like, oh, I'm so tired. Right. I just, I don't want to, I don't want to do it. Yeah. I want to do it. It takes like an hour for me to get the whole, the whole right. thing done. Right. So there's a local barbershop called Adam, Adam's Barber Chair. Okay. Uh, right where Peter and Grill is. Or, You're cheating on Michelangelo's, which is literally across the street from that. Yes, I am. Okay. That's, that's my childhood. That was my childhood barber. I see. Yeah. Michelangelo's. Anyway. So I went to, to, to Adam. Mm-hmm. I walk in and, uh. Um, I had an appointment for six o'clock and I walk in, I look to the left and there's a big uh, plaque poster or whatever yeah. of uh, Masjid al-Aqsa, oh. which is the Dome of the Rock uh, in uh, yeah. Jerusalem, Palestine, sorry. Um, and I was like, oh, the Muslim. Mm-hmm. Not that it matters, but anyway, that was just the added benefit, um, the added bonus. So I sat down and there's a guy named Ali, mm-hmm. brown dude, right? very quiet, doesn't talk much, just a he tell yeah. you, you know, what do you need? So I told him the stuff. Yeah. And at this point in time, I'm thinking to myself, let me just see how he does it. Maybe I can quicken my game. Right. Because it's taking me about an hour for me to do what I do. Seems like a long time. Yep. He took about 52 minutes. God darn. So what happened is that he, like, you know, he, he trimmed my hair, did the thing. And after I said, can you line up the beard real quick? So he lines up the beard, right? Yeah. And after that, I was like, well, what else can this guy do? Right. I might as well just just pay for everything uh-huh. and see what what's the level of quality what's what do i works? like yeah exactly right when, just in case maybe one day if, if like uh i need to go out somewhere and i don't have enough time i'll just right. come over here and just like let it run right so after he lined up the beard and stuff like that he's he uses the the blade mm-hmm. but before putting the blade to to like start shaving he slaps a hot towel on your face oh my god right yeah first yeah. like he turns the seat around mm-hmm. you like recline back oh nice all right, right. this is cool i start like i'm like getting self-conscious so i was like smiling a little bit then he goes in the room <laughs> picks up a picks up a nice hot towel yeah and the way how he puts it like underneath and he wraps it around right and, like rest like it your on your eyes just yeah, a little bit yeah, out yeah You're like oh this guy knows how to work it oh man and just like the steam it was very nice very uh very relaxing yeah then he takes that off and then uh puts uh puts the cream and starts shaving right right and it's like he's very good mm-hmm. right but what i liked about it yeah it was like a little bit of a mini vacation mm. it was like you know, for like 50 minutes. Right. All I had to do was like lean back and just yeah. enjoy and have the somebody work on Yeah, it. exactly. So then, you know, you, you shaped up the beard, lined it up pretty good. Not bad. Mm-hmm. I do, but I, I think I do better. I, or at least in, in my in my mind, I, I think okay. I do better. Um, but all in all, pretty good. How much did you charge you? With, tac, uh, with tip, mm-hmm. it came down to about 49. Okay. I feel like that's standard for you. Uh, yeah, it's a little cheaper, but okay. yeah. But standard is like it's a relative term because I haven't I haven't I haven't paid at all in like two and a half years or something like that. Right. So uh, fifty fifty bucks seems a lot to me. How long did it take for him to do your head? Just uh, you know, ears up. Uh, really quick. Good. Because yeah, like, so what like the heck does it take an hour to do? Five minutes or something like that. I'm glad you got the works like the little hot towel situation. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd be like, what's happening here, man? No, it was uh, it was really cool. Sick. Prob- had a, probably won't go again i got a, a why not 50 bucks dude i completely agree yeah it's absurd yeah but because i can do just as good as a job the only yeah. thing i can't do is like i can't do the shape up in the back mm-hmm. you know like you know so the back of your the the, yeah. the back of the neck is nice and flat and, and crisp and whatnot those lines i won't be able to do myself i went to donato's and they did the hot towel thing yeah it was nice and then i felt the guy's hands come in start massaging my temples yeah I was like what's happening man i don't want and it felt nice, but in my head, I'm like, dude, we're cool, dude. Just just leave the towel and go 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 somewhere else. I don't need a temple massage. <laughs> do you have a, do you have a problem with like a male masseuse? Nah, Samir is nice. He's gay too, so he knows what he's doing. Right. Okay. I actually appreciate. I prefer a gay dude massaging me for some reason because I'm like, this guy knows what he likes. <laughs> you know, he knows right down to the T. <laughs> I, I recently went to massage addict. Okay. Because the first massage you get over there is like 40 bucks for an hour or whatever. Right. So why not? I have nothing to lose. So mm-hmm. I went over there. I had nothing to lose. Uh, you ever get a boner while getting a massage? No. No problem. Keep All going. Right. Uh, so the, the the guy who, uh, this is my first time I was going to get a guy mas- masseuse. Yeah. A guy named uh, Dennis. Okay. Dennis? In your head? Yeah. How big is Dennis? He sounds pretty big right now. Okay. <laughs> but you tell me. Because <laughs> my masseuse is also a Dennis, but he's all the way in Toronto. Okay. And my guy is strong as... He's he's a boulder. Yeah. Yeah. So is this guy. Oh, nice. You know how I can tell? Yeah. Well, uh, so I'm I'm laying face down. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, I tell him like, what are my ailments? Right. Uh, a little bit lower back, upper neck. 
uh, he's like, all right, cool. So like, you know, the beginning of the massage is just sort of like just warming up your body, right? Yeah, he's just rubbing, you right? know, has that lotion, yeah, yeah. he's rubbing you down. Right. So the, the once when he gets it, and then he puts his hand, look, one hand mm-hmm. on my back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, that's a lot of hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a nice meaty it's hand. St- it starts from the left, from, from the like east hemisphere. All right. Goes all the way. Hey, this guy's touching all my ribs at once. What the heck? <laughs> like this guy is a big man nice man it was a good massage probably the best i've ever had i asked for like you asked for men i oh dude i've i pay good money a massage is a pricey thing generally for sure and i've been to because my wife likes expensive massages uh-huh. we've been to hammam we've been to shangri-la we've been to you know you name it you know we've been to the ritz yeah right and i don't mean for an occasion it's just like we need a massage and she's like i booked it we're going here well i'll we'll go at six and then at six i'm like where are we going we're at the shangri-la <laughs> And I'm eating all the old, they give you food beforehand, and right. I eat as much as is possible. I'm trying to get your money's worth. But I've been disappointed many times by either weak men or small ladies. Right. But if it's a big lady or a big dude, I'm a happy camper. I, uh, I need somebody applying pressure. I need to feel it. It doesn't feel good. Otherwise, I'm just like, what am I paying you for, man? I yeah, can really. lean on a wall with a ball between, you know? Yeah, for sure. Us. That's true. I need a, a person who can, who can really do what they're good at. Yeah. I think it's such a cool profession. Anybody who uses their hands to help somebody heal. Right. It's such <clears throat> a cool profession. In ter- it's, it's the stand-up of medicine. You know, it's like the <laughs> acoustic guitar of, <laughs> of, of the healing industry. Like physiotherapists, yeah. uh, masseuse, yoga folks. Yeah. I like all of them. All right. Where did nurse feel, fall in your uh, categories? I, I, I like nurses a lot because I know a lot of nurses, but uh, it's, I feel like that's like a support singer in the background you know like it's like a backup singer uh, i don't know if that's accurate i feel like now they have to they there's more responsibilities on nurses now mm-hmm. because there's so little doctors yeah i don't know maybe we should get a nurse or a doctor because i don't even know if any of that is true let's go to doctors we can get a nurse Rudwana's a nurse oh yeah we can have her on she's very good she's very like articulate and smart and stuff uh-huh yeah mm-hmm. we should we should so how's the fasting treating you, bro? The day one just helped uh, a buddy move. Hamid moved from Mississauga to Milton. Yeah. And it was draining. Yeah. Yeah. I felt yeah, really right. good for the first like two hours. Right. But like four to five, like it, I came right from there to here. Yeah. And uh, now I'm actually having problems putting words together. And it's like I was noticing it on my drive over uh-huh. where my focus was just not as good as it should be. Uh-huh. So yeah, it'll be fine. Uh, we got some really good food for uh, iftar, so I'll be fine. What do you got? Tell me. We got some biryani coming over. We got a lot of fruit-related veg- uh, fruit salads, and then we got a salad. We got have some samosas. Oh, it's so brown. Are yeah. You, are I you just, hosting? Uh, no, this is, my mom's doing it, and Zanab's parents are coming over. Okay. Um, my sister-in-law, so it'll be great. Like the the key for me is to start my plate with the healthy stuff. Okay. Because I know I'm not getting back to the healthy stuff once I start eating the bad stuff. So that's the, the exact path I take to meals. I'll get a meal with a salad. Yeah. But I got to eat the salad first. Right. Because once I eat the, the Philly cheesesteak, I'm not coming back to the salad. Yeah. No one circles back. No one's circling back to salad. Are you coming back to salad? Salad is just a promise for more food to come. Yeah. Mm. Some people love salad. No one loves salad. Some people vegetarians. Yeah, they're they can't their shut whole, up about their salads. Yeah, their, their whole life is a lie. <laughs> I mean, their whole life is a lie. Food is way too important. Yeah, just eating salad all the time. Salads, food. Screw that. You throw some sweet potato on that. No, it's cold. It is uncooked. It has no fire in it. Yeah, it's just not good. It's not soul food. It's not good at it's all. Just man. barely food. Yeah, it's good for you though. I would rather take a salad, yeah. blend it up. Right. Right? Put some chicken broth in it. Okay. And unsalad it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then, then put this... And then drink it as a soup. Right. It would be better than a salad. Yeah. A salad is a, is, a, is a healthy meal replacement. Yeah. A salad is a, is a, is a, is a consolation prize. Right. Is it a, a salad is a promise that you will get a six pack. If I come to somebody's house and uh, they just have salads, yeah. I am not happy. No, you I'm might like even leave here. You might even leave early. I might even leave early. You might say that your head hurts. Yeah. And you're like, you know, I can't do this. Yeah, and go get a fish fillet or something. <laughs> get trash. What are you feeling? I got a fish fillet he- headache. Mm, man, I, I, 
I like eating salads because I know it's good for me. But yeah, you're, everything you stated is correct. I had a salad yesterday. Here, listen, I have salads so infrequently that I can like pinpoint. <laughs> like I had one yesterday and before that I had one a month ago. Yeah, no. No. That so, sounds no good. I've been just, yo. What? Okay, never mind. Come on. This is a problem. We're just thinking out loud. But what day are you coming over this week so we can make steak and record it? <laughs> I'll let you know. All right. It can't be tomorrow. I mean, it can't be Monday. Okay. Probably Wednesday. But I need to th- I need to get the steak ready. Right, right. I got you. That's what I'm thinking. Right. Right? You come over. Whatever steak we select, I cut into nice three pieces. Right. And we do one like rare, medium rare, and then well done. Okay. And that way you can like try. I'm like, okay, you know what? This is what I like. Right. I also got a really high tech thermometer. Okay. Um, you it's trying to flex that game. Yeah, it's like this bit. It's like this bit. Your phone size, yeah. and it has like a nice wire and a metal stick coming out, and you can just leave it in the barbecue. Oh wow! And the alarm will go off when it gets to me. You can, you can set a medium rare alarm, and it'll tell you when it goes medium rare. I it's I got a great deal, so I'm like, I want to try this out. Okay, please yeah. tell me what the great deal is for a thermometer that you can it's like leave thirty bucks. Of, okay, it's not too bad. Yeah, yeah. I don't know thermometers, but I'm assuming one that can withstand a barbecue. Yeah. Pretty damn awesome. Dude, I love it. You can set an alarm not based on time, but the temperature inside of the meat. Uh huh. That's magical. Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah. I want to see this thermometer. I'll show you. I'll show you. I don't have a. I, we have it on Amazon. I'll show you a picture in a minute <laughs> after we're done with this. All right. Yeah. No, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I'm going to put it on the. I'm going to miss steak, man. Ramadan, I'm not eating as much steak. Not yeah. even close. Who knows? Maybe Monday I start just staking it up. I was listening to a YouTube video. Let me try that again. I was watching a YouTube video. Nice. And <laughs> and uh, um, this nutritionist was saying mm-hmm. that when you eat meat, yeah, uh, it takes up sixty percent of uh, your stomach energy okay. to like process it. Oh man! So when you're depleted. Right, like when you're fasting, yeah, it's a smart idea for you to like, even if you're gonna have meat, have you know leaner meats or l- like smaller portions of okay. meats as opposed to as opposed. It'll to be fine. Meat. Yeah, I'm, no, no, I don't care. I'm just, I'm just saying. I just heard this, so I'm just, yeah, yeah, <laughs> just no, telling no. you. I, the way I see it, even the meats that. So what I'm gonna do when when we do this, we'll make a couple of steaks. Yep. You know, cut them up nicely. Maybe do different uh, seasonings on on them. Right. And then we'll have, uh, never mind, that's meat too. I'm like, and then we'll have some, you know, short ribs. I was like, You're not, <laughs> that's not the salad of meat, <laughs> short ribs, you know. It's thin, like meat. But we'll have some salads too. We'll have some kale salad and we'll right. have some sweet potato chips that we'll make. Uh, that's gonna, that sounds good. Yeah, it'll be starchy Yeah, and stuff. <clears throat> yeah, I gotta, go, I gotta go figure out the equipment situation. And homemade ice cream. That's what? what? We'll do. We'll do homemade ice cream. Okay. Also, we have a homemade ice cream maker. Uh, we see. made ice cream on the weekend. It was wonderful. Really? Yeah. Rubes are flavored. Oh, yes. So it tastes like red pink. All right, man. Is it like rose? Is yeah. It, is that what it's supposed to taste yeah. like? Yeah. So I was like, like a rose? if that's how you describe that, that's it. But yeah. It's like a... All right. So people who don't know, it's a, it's a, it's a syrup... That yeah. you add to water or it's like milk a or whatever. rose water grenadine-ish. Wow, you've classed it all I think, the way up. Yeah, if I had to, that's how I'd do it. Right. Is it Faluda or Aluda for you good people? Faluda. Faluda. Who's saying Aluda? I think Mauritians call it Aluda. Okay, I won't make fun of it then. <laughs> like poor people can't afford the F? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Uh, the funny thing is in Pakistan, Aluda f- fucking got me saying it. <laughs> you didn't even try very hard is how impressionable I am at the moment. But uh, the Faluda, they advertise it like a uh, summertime drink for the Middle East. Yeah. I talked to Middle Easterns, never heard of it. <laughs> They've never heard of it and made no traction in the Middle East. But it's very big in Pakistan and it's here now in Walmart. You yes, can get a Walmart. of course. Brown people love Walmart. We do. And we love Faluda. And Walmart is very aware of our needs. Right. Yeah, like, is it chia seeds? That's what's yeah. inside it, right? So uh, chia seeds is what we use, and it looks exactly like what it should. Yeah. And then you uh, you freeze some uh, spaghetti-looking thingies. Uh-huh. There's a technical word for it. For it. We have them at home. I think it, there's sea, sea, seaweed jelly. Possibly. And uh, yeah, it, it's great. The ice cream itself is stellar. And also, making ice cream at home is very easy. I didn't realize how easy it would be. Explain. So you get a... It's, it's a ice cream making bowl which is like a metal bowl it retains the the coldness right and you just put that in the freezer right put it in there for like a day okay because you're gonna make it the next day right so the next day 
you put all the ingredients in here, which is going to be milk, sugar, milk, sugar. It's not a ton. You, you can make it fairly healthy. So okay. we didn't put a lot of sugar in because Ruabza itself has Faluda, the Ruabza, the liquid itself. It's has essentially sugar. Li- liquid sugar. And we have a KitchenAid. So you put this stuff in there, plug into the KitchenAid, turn it on, the KitchenAid spins it. Yeah. And it just gets harder. This All this liquid just gets harder and harder because it's in the super cold receptacle. And when it's done, you can just eat it right there or put it in the freezer for later. But yeah, there's no, uh, you don't have to fool yourself into, you know, sh- it looks perfectly like ice cream. Really? You don't have to pretend there's like, no, oh, There's it's no good jump. Enough. There's yeah. no suspension of disbelief. No, it's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. Okay. So yeah, we'll do that too. It'll be a good day. I feel like, uh, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I feel like you, you, you're only a couple of tries away from trying that with mango. Yeah, I guess. I'm I pretty guess sure you're going to want to do a Because I'm a brown, less, I have to, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'd probably like slice up some mangoes and toss that in there as well. Right. This is essentially the um, ice cream lessee. Oh, we're fasting. You can tell, <laughs> can't you? You can tell. You got it into foods for no reason. For the next three, four weeks, we're just going to devolve back into like just talking about food. I'm going to actually try to like do more recipes and have better iftars. Okay. Yeah. What, like healthier or are you just better? Healthier is, but like, yeah, healthier, but also I realize that if I cook for myself, I'm happier. Okay. I'm happy. You think you're tapping to some genetic thing? Yeah, because I don't give two craps about cooking over a stove. I can't, I, everything I want to do, I want to do on fire. fire. <laughs> Even if I do stuff that involves a store, I, yeah. a stove, I go outside and use my side stove on yeah. my barbecue grill <laughs> and I cook on that. Because there's a fire, because everything in my actual stove is that hot surface. Right. Just some nonsense. You know? That's like the automatic of cars. You yes. Know? Okay. <laughs> All right. Like, <laughs> well done. I'm trying to speak to you. <laughs> that worked. But yeah, I need fire and that it makes sense all of a sudden. Cooking, eating, all of it makes sense. Yeah. Before it was like, yeah, why don't we just go outside? It's almost cheaper to go outside and get a shawarma and bring it home. Right. But... Once you get, you know, your own hole, you get your spice racks. You can tell what smell things are. You're like, this is oregano. This is basil. Basil's bitter. Did you know bitter? <laughs> you get to develop a whole different language for it. So you're talking about, you're talking about barbecuing. Yeah, man. You know who, who likes barbecuing? Who? Guy Ritchie. That makes sense. Guy Ritchie loves you, barbecue. It, where'd you hear this? So I listened to him on the Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Right. Pretty good. Yeah. Insi- very good. In, 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 like insightful. Right. A very interesting man. Right. Uh, one of the things that you pointed out, I'll just bring it up now, is, uh, you know, he's, he was wearing a, he was wearing a suit. A, a suit. He's got like a pocket square or something yeah. like that. And immediately uh, Joe Rogan was poking fun at it. Yeah. Because Joe Rogan takes pride in the fact that he doesn't give a frick about yeah. what, he, what he wears. He's also fashioned a life where he doesn't have to. Fair enough. Right. Um, and so, you know, he just pokes a little bit of fun here and there. And Guy Ritchie squeezes the life, like makes him, <laughs> I felt like he like, Turned it on his head. Yep. He's like, you're a 50-year-old man dressing like you're a teenager. <laughs> you know? Like, this is a suit of armor. It was actually, yeah. I, I won't be, I don't know. Neither one of us has a British accent. Yeah. I'm sure we can explain it. Probably not to that degree, but. No, I mean, if you want to check it out, he, he puts up a, it, you don't even have to go that deep in that podcast for you to listen to it. For you to hear that part where he's talking about uh, uh, the importance of dressing well. Mm-hmm. Um, but it really boils down to this. Everything that you could dress well by going off the rack, mm-hmm. right? But the idea is if you can afford it, um, or even if you can uh, just buy something off the rack and then bring it to some place where it can get altered mm-hmm. so that it truly fits you, yeah. you'll feel much more comfortable yeah. in nice clothes. There's a, I think that's the, the the big disconnect is a lot of people, uh, like dudes, don't want to wear... I'm dude. Yes. I'm that dude. Yeah. Don't You're the wear. other dude. I'm the other dude. Yeah. You're the other dude. And what I took away from it is like, you got to own your suit. Yeah. You can't buy that suit that you didn't love, makes you look a certain way, but you didn't love and just put it on and feel that you're ever going to like wearing this. Yeah. Unless you own that suit, you put that pot, you pocket square in, you give it something that, you know, you wanted to do. Right. And immediately for me, in my head, I was applying it to life. Uh-huh. You got to own you got a job. Yeah, you, everybody's got to have a job. Yeah. But you got to you got to either take pride in it so it's more than a job. Yeah. Or get another job where you can take pride in it and do do it the way you want to do it. Right. I'm in sales. There's a lot of ways to do what I do. It's right. an art. I'm talking to people trying to, you know, get them to see the, the things the way I see them. Right. And that that talk was very influential for me. I agree. 
from a yeah. suit perspective, yeah, yeah, yeah. which it finally made sense after you know thirty odd years. But I'm like, oh yeah, you're right because that makes perfect sense. Right. And when, when I wear things I like that are still like higher end, right. I feel a certain way. Yeah. If I don't like wearing them, I just feel like I'm pretending. Yeah. And I disdain the suit. <clears throat> it's not the suit. It's me. Yeah. I'm not owning it. You're not owning it. Thank you, Guy Ritchie. Right. At that point in time, it was someone else's idea to buy that suit, or the, it was it was the store that said that this was a nice suit, and you had Even to wear dude, it. Dude, it's the job. Yeah, or the job, job made you wear this. Oh, suit. Oh yeah, yeah, the job also. Yeah, yeah. I it wasn't you my, my job that chose the suit. Do. The job chose the suit yeah. for you. So you gotta make it work for you. And that's how they've bastardized suits for all of all these big cities. Yeah, like Toronto is just a bunch of people walking around in suits, and I don't I don't like any of them because I can tell they don't like what they're like. They don't like themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, and I associate suits with that. Yeah. And then Guy Ritchie comes in, and then he chokes me out with his suit, and I'm like, oh. So we I heard about him. Well, I heard him on the Nerdist. Yeah. So he had a similar conversation, not a similar conversation, but it's similar in in um, in spirit, I guess. Mm -hmm. But he was talking about a bunch of other I didn't things. Hear it. So he was talking about his appreciation for uh, Instagram, mm -hmm. and so obviously, this you know the problem with Instagram is that you can share stuff on Instagram, yeah. and you know, like shitty comments or attention whatever. Or, yeah. Or no, I mean like the, the, just for like someone who's not looking oh, for attention, but like, you know, you know it, it might, it might bring unwanted attention mm -hmm. where you were trying to share it for, you know, for happiness sake or whatever the case right. may be. So anyway, uh, so he was talking about that, but he did say that he does appreciate Instagram because it allowed him to go into like, find these like really, really obscure niches. Mm. And what he's been able to do is like, he's been able to, to string those niches together so at first he got really into artisan knives yeah and then later he got into artisan beer right then he got into artisan meats mm. then he got into barbecue and now he's cutting his artisan meat with his artisan knives barbecuing oh, it while drinking his artisan beer I'll and he's so happy <laughs> my stomach just was like it's it's trying to eat itself right now <laughs> That's what's happening. That sounds wonderful. I'll download it actually here. I'll listen yeah. to it on the way home. Well, anyway, it was an example of like, you know, uh, understanding what potential pitfalls a certain thing is going to be and yeah. then just making it work for you. I didn't realize I'd be, I'd be obsessed with meat though. Yeah. Dude, if I see a meat store, I stop <clears throat> and I go inside just to look. I might not even buy anything. Halal and halal don't matter. Just walk in. Right now, I'm just, if I see like a really expensive place, I'll just go in, even if it's not halal, I'll go in to see like their quality of meat. And then when I go to a halal store, I'm looking for a similar quality. Gotcha. Which brought me to Shah Halal Meats in Oakville. Right. Very good quality meats. Does he do, does he do game? No, I asked. I asked and I explained why and he gave me a good 10 minutes of us talking and uh -huh. he was like, I look into it. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, that's cool. So yeah, he's a cool guy. He's a fairly young British guy. So... Yeah, I like it. But no, I got to get some game. I want to get some elk meat. I don't know why. Joe Rogan. Dude, he look, how many Instagram posts you got to watch of this guy pan from... from wait, I've no, never hold on seen a, a Joe Rogan Instagram post. What? Yeah, man. All right, it's so many of him, like, cooking elk steak, Yeah. right? Seasoning elk steak. Really? Put it on, like, jalapenos. Maybe he takes it, he pan fries it a little bit. Yeah. He's got that, puts, like, a blob of kimchi around it. No way. Right? Got it. Got it. Some avocados. Sometimes he puts some mushrooms. It's great. It's been... <laughs> all, he, all he eats, dude, is elk steak, and it's amazing. He's got a freezer full of elk. That's why. Yeah. I got a, he, got a uh, freezer full of elk. Yeah. This needs to happen, by the way. I need yeah. to kill food and freeze it and then just eat that for two months. Uh-huh. I'm so hungry now. <laughs> I know. I know. We should pivot off of the food, but whatever, man. I mean, like, where are we at? We are at 51 minutes, dude. 51 minutes. That That's flew good. right by. Solid. Solid. All right, people. <clears throat> what else is happening? I don't know. That's it. I was going to sign off. Yeah, let's sign it off. All right, cool. All right, people. Enjoy. <clears throat> wow. I can't drink water, so you're just going to have to put up with me clearing my throat. Um, enjoy your first week of Ramadan. It's going to be done before you even know it, so make the most out of it. Enjoy your Tarawi. Wait, no. I got to say it properly. Tarawi. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I've been the, saying it wrong this whole time. Uh, we've been saying it like brown people, dude. If you go to Isna, come check us out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're there generally on we're, the weekends. We're generally in the gym. I am. I don't get there early enough. Do you go to the main room? I go. I try to get to the main room, yeah. 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 You, you got to go with layers. Sometimes it's cold outside. It's warm inside. Yeah. It's steaming hot right in the middle of the whole thing. Oh, but then you, you, you stand right underneath a fan, then you get cold again. Anyway, that's not the point of this sign-off. Um, yeah. 
enjoy yourselves. Wait, and also take heed that, um, you know, fasting is actually helping your immune system. So if it hurts, there's some benefit to it. That's why, that's what I was doing today on YouTube. I was nice. Googling benefits of fasting just so that I could find like, what is, I get the metaphysical reasons why I need to do it, but I wanted to know what, what, what are the physical uh, benefits. I'm not going to share it because I don't really remember it because I'm really hungry. <laughs> All right, people, take care of yourselves. We'll see you in a week. 